Congratulations, New Orleans Saints. They have become the first team in the NFC to clinch a playoff berth, whether that's the division title or uh, a wild card remains to be seen, although they have a three-game lead plus the tiebreaker over the Buccaneers. They are one game away from clinching the division, and they've won three in a row with Taysom Hill at quarterback. 8-0 now dating back to last year with backup quarterbacks in the game. Not a bad run for Sean Payton and his backup quarterbacks. This one's different, though. Now, look, we saw Teddy Bridgewater end up getting a nice contract with the Carolina Panthers, $22 million a year, and he's done well this year. Taysom Hill, though, a guy that Sean Payton has compared to Steve Young, a guy who is just a blur when he runs the football, and you don't want to get in his way if you happen to have an opportunity to get uh, in his way. Uh, He's developing as a passer, Chris. And yesterday in the win over the Falcons, second win in 15 days by Taysom Hill and the Saints over the Falcons, he he had uh, an impressive performance throwing the ball. And I talked to him after the game. I said, what's, what's the reason for the improvement in the passing performance? And he said that he, it's it's the timing. And the timing with the receivers has improved because of – not just the reps in practice, but working on it after practice, doing all of the 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 reps yeah. in your mind, the the visualization. He he told me that he spends every night thinking about his footwork, thinking about his mechanics, thinking about what they're gonna do against this defense, that defense, runs through every play of the game plan constantly, visualizing how it's gonna go on Sunday. You put that kind of starting quarterback commitment into a body that has the skills to get it done, especially now from a passing standpoint, we're seeing it. And, and, and I said to him, are you, have you proven that you are a week in week out starting quarterback in the NFL? And he said, yeah. And he's talked to Sean Payton about it. And I think that they understand he's either going to be the guy after breeze or he's going to be the guy somewhere else. Yeah, That's right. But, but, but he's, he's done enough. And I know there are still, there's just this strange anti Taysom Hill cult out there that just wants him to fail to prove that they were right when they had their knee jerk reaction that he oh, was a fluke yeah. and he was like a Tim Tebow. Isn't that stupid that yeah. people are that way? Yeah. Like, uh, not it's that, like I'm, with Josh I'm, Allen. It, I hear you. That's why you hear me get mad all the time. They're, yeah. they're still living off their college review on him. Okay, let's move past it now. He's proved that wrong. I know you were wrong for the first time in your life. So what? It's football. You're going to be wrong a lot. I know. It, people won't get over it. I don't know what it is either, Mike. We have to speak our hot take into existence. So anything that happens that advances our narrative becomes the headline. And anything that cuts against it gets ignored. I feel like too many people are doing that with Taysom Hill. And fine, he'll just keep playing. Yeah. And he'll just keep winning. And I don't know whether we'll see him this weekend. I think we will see him against the Eagles. I think the earliest we're going to see Breeze is next weekend against the Chiefs, which uh, circle that one. That should be a pretty impactful game. Wow. But Taysom Hill getting it done. And uh, the other thing he told me, too, and I, and I love this, because every year Sean Payton's got another gimmick, another prop. He's like carrot top with the things that he does to, to get messages across to his team. But he's big on the Bill Parcells, don't eat the cheese yeah. message. So he put baskets of cheese in every player's locker. Uh, and uh, I said, well, what kind of cheese? And he'll said every kind of cheese, like big baskets of cheese to send a message of don't eat the cheese and uh, you know it's uh, y- you do what you do you do That's... to get to get these guys to understand they do have to knock these off one at a time because they've had their hearts ripped out every postseason for the last three years and they wanted to change this year obviously yeah no I mean it's first off I, I guess you know the Taysom Hill you know I want, just one little thing there he he's showing us you know there's plenty of there from him as a drop back quarterback standpoint to go oh there's a lot of good to build on and let's not forget, I mean, his running is a real thing. You know, you can't take that away from his statistical output. So, yeah, it might not look the same as for Drew Brees, but the running success of the football team is also a lot predicated on Taysom Hill and what he brings to the table. He makes things easier for Alvin Kamara and Latavius Murray because teams are worried about, ooh, Taysom Hill might keep the ball off the edge. And then, of course, him just act, act, actually running for 83 yards is special that way too. But, like, when you take over as the starting quarterback, I, I don't know if people always realize this. Like, I bet you Taysom Hill hasn't thrown a pass to Michael Thomas all year long until he got named the starter. When you're in training camp, Drew Brees gets to throw to Michael Thomas and the starting receivers all the time. You never get to do that. So when you're thrusted in there all of a sudden in week 9 and 10, 
you're going, wait, I've been throwing to scout team guys and practice squad players and all that stuff. This is a little different speed and aggression out of cuts, and this player is a different player. So there's some getting used to there. And the last thing, Mike, we probably need to talk about like Sean Payton as coach of the year more. I, I feel like he's gotten to that status where he's so good every year now. We just kind of go, eh, we know he's good. We don't need to give him the word. And that's kind of BS. You know, I think that happens with him and Belichick a lot here over the last four or five years. Hey, we drafted coach of the year not that long ago, and I made him one of my candidates, and people were like, what are you talking about? Well, nine straight wins, that's what I'm talking about. You know, it's it's that perpetual. Backup QBs. It takes a while to figure out what we've got, right. and then once we figure out what we've got, we're going to kill you every week. And, yeah, if Drew Brees gets hurt, we'll be fine with the backup, and just off we go. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's fun to watch it happen. And that defense has gotten so Ooh. good. One of the reasons, and I don't, I don't want to go back and 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 delve too deeply into the bounty scandal. Although I think it was complete and total BS. It was an example of a cultural reality in the NFL. That's the second time it's come up today because yeah. Greg Williams was the centerpiece of it. But that that lost year of 2012 really yeah, threw them. their defense, especially, into a tailspin. And it took them a while to recover. 13, 14, 15. It took them a while to get back. To where they needed to be and they finally got the defense back and there's a reason why they've been great 17 18 19 20 remember breeze told us back in miami before the super bowl he actually thought about retiring after the 2017 season because yeah. he'd suffered through all those mediocre years he was just that's it i i this may be it for me and that was the year that they've they've found this unprecedented run of success, four straight playoff appearances for the first time in franchise history, Chris. Yeah, it's uh, it's impressive. I mean, just for everything. The way the te team is built, you know, the different styles in which they can win, the coaching adjustments on the fly throughout the year, everything. The defense has been the most dominant defense in football the last four or five weeks. I, I don't have any problem saying that. It's very special. Dennis Allen's killing it on that side of the ball. Their defensive line dominates. It's one of the best offensive lines in football as well to go along with that. You know, Sean Payton, you know, that's that's what's cool about him. Yeah, he's this passing wizard genius and all that, but he's got this Bill Parcells, and he's told you this before, run the football in the back of his ear and, like, physicality and, you know, 1987, 80, 86 New York Giants type mentality too, which I think is really cool combination of, of how he coaches. Yeah, it uh, it's uh, going to be fun to watch what the Saints do down the stretch, and uh, they lock up the one seed, and 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 I just wonder whether and to what extent if they have home field advantage for the postseason, what kind of a deal can they strike locally, right, to get some fans in the stadium? Uh, that that would be compelling because any edge they get is going to help them win those games and advance to the Super Bowl in Tampa. All right, uh, DeForest Buckner was back for the Colts this week. He tested positive for COVID-19. He told me he had no symptoms. I spoke to him after the game. He had two sacks at Deshaun Watson. No symptoms, felt fine, watched the game. It was killing him to not be out there because he knew he could have made a difference against the Tennessee Titans. Definitely made a difference yesterday. And the two sacks of Deshaun Watson, we talked about how difficult it is to track down Deshaun Watson. And I was reminded of Aaron Donald talking about sacking Kyler Murray and the fact that he's been chasing around Russell Wilson his whole career makes it easier to get Kyler Murray and I asked Buckner your time with the 49ers how much of that chasing Wilson chasing Kyler Murray last year helped he said it's a huge advantage it teaches you how to how to go after a guy who's that elusive never try to arm tackle a guy who's that elusive and you almost have to strike you know when you get your chance you strike you don't let him get moving you got to get on him while you can. He did it twice yesterday. The Texans gave the Colts a much better game than many thought they would. The Texans have been impressive, and they had a chance to win it late, but for a botched exchange yeah. after a snap, at, you know, maybe they would have won that game, and we'd be leading and talking about a very different set of circumstances right now in the AFC. But, uh, uh, you know, Buckner on the field makes that defense dramatically better. Yes. And now they're back in a tie for first place in the AFC South. And four games to go, and if they win that division, they're going to be a team to be reckoned with in the playoffs. Yeah, no, no doubt. Well, I mean, he, he kind of gets, like, lost in the shuffle a little bit for whatever reason because he just doesn't – it's not always eye-popping stats. But it's like, hey, would the Rams be as good if Aaron Donald was on the defense? Oh, no, they wouldn't. Well, I know DeForest Buckner's not Aaron Donald, but 
he's in that upper class of like really special defense alignment in football. And I do have a hard time thinking the Tennessee Titans run the ball on the Colts like that if DeForest Buckner's not there. Not, you know, there. He, he's a force to be reckoned with, and it just allows them to not have to blitz or pressure or do n- none of that as much as, you know, you, you'd want to just because you don't want to stress your defensive backs and everything. Watson was phenomenal in the football game yesterday. Game was funny. I mean, it was a first half back and forth shootout, and you went, wow, this is fun. I mean, this looks like it's going to be like a 41-38 final. And then all of a sudden, the second half, nobody could sustain a drive or keep anything going until that last drive with Watson. And you're just thinking, Deshaun Watson at the five-yard line is almost like a, it's like Aaron Rodgers or Patrick Mahomes. When they get down there, you're just like, it's, they're going to score a touchdown. It's just what play is it going to happen? And, you know, to have the bad snap uh, like that, that kind of just fitting for their whole year. A lot of good, but uh, just that one thing or that one bad moment that kind of ruins everything. It's Raiders, Texans, Steelers, Jaguars for the Indianapolis Colts the rest of the way and uh, currently tied for first place in the AFC South with the Tennessee Titans. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.